I saved over $100,000 when I renovated my first investment property, which was a quadplex. And I suspect that if you are in a similar situation, you will be able to do the same. In this video, I'm going to explain how I made it happen. Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on this video. Welcome to Transparent Finance, where my goal is to be as open as possible with my finances. If you subscribe to this channel and watch my videos, I know that you will improve your overall understanding of building your net worth, retiring early and investing. Getting back to our topic, for those that don't know, I bought a quadplex in 2016, which I ultimately sold for a hefty profit. Although I do regret selling it, I learned a ton of lessons that I've been able to transfer into future investments. One of those lessons was how to save money on renovations. And I am not talking about skimping on quality here. Stick around and let's get into how I was able to do it. Before we get into it, I want to start off by saying that from when I purchased the quadplex in 2016 to when I sold it in 2019, I put about 300 hours into it. That includes renovation and management. Considering that I made about $300,000 in profit on the sale and from rent, that puts my time at about $1,000 an hour for this investment, which of course is amazing no matter what industry you are in. Okay, so the stage is set. I purchased the quadplex and three of the four units needed heavy renovations. I received quotes from multiple contractors and they range from $160,000 to $200,000 for full renovations of all three units. This included kitchen remodels and bathroom remodels. At the time, I did not have that kind of money. The majority of my money was tied up in the quadplex itself, so I had no other choice than to get my hands dirty. The first thing I did to save money was do all the demo work myself. I just rented a large dumpster and threw everything in there. And yes, I realized that all these real estate gurus will tell you not to do any of the work yourself because time is money. But when you consider how much value you can bring to real estate with your own two hands, I think it is worth your time investment. The second thing that I did to save money was pay family and friends to help me with bigger tasks. This includes the demo work and also painting, removing old flooring, cleaning, and other tasks. Usually I would pay a friend or my brother $100 per day, but also pay for food and drinks. It was a good way to spend time with friends and family while also helping them out financially and getting the work done that needed to get done. This is going to be a lot cheaper than hiring professionals to get the job done, but giving you the control of getting it done how you want it. Some people like being completely hands off, but I found that being as hands on as possible with my first investment property paid dividends when it comes to experience and understanding the cost of labor. The third thing that helped me save a ton of money was still working my full-time job. I did this while working on the quadplex nights, mornings, and weekends. I will admit, mostly I was by myself on those weeknights. On the weekends is when friends and family would have the time to come help. And I don't want to paint this as being a walk in the park. There were times that I would be working at my job from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Then I would be at the quadplex from 6.30 p.m. to midnight. Then the next morning I could be there from 6 a.m. until I had to leave for my job. This is obviously a time consuming process, but it is worth it in the end. A lot of people do not have the ability to visualize the end goal. And that is when things can become overwhelming and not seem worth the time. I was dating my wife at the time, and it became quite challenging balancing working on the quadplex and spending time with her. Ultimately, I got her on board with the end goal and there were multiple times that we would have date nights working on the property and we would eat a takeout dinner on a cardboard box. It might sound silly, but I have good memories of those nights. The fourth thing I did to help me save time and money was to only hire contractors when necessary. There were a few things that I refused to do myself, which includes plumbing, electrical, laying tile, and doing anything with drywall. So it was only for those things that I ended up hiring contractors. And I specifically was looking for contractors that did not charge very much. A quick tip here, is that you are not going to find affordable contractors by doing a Google search and using the top results. Those companies pay a ton of money to be at the top of Google search results, which means they have to charge you more to make up for it. If you are a first time investor, you might not have a big network, but try to utilize anyone you know for recommendations for affordable contractors. If that doesn't work, head over to Craigslist and find someone who will get a specific job done. I cannot stress this enough. I know there's a lot of hate about Craigslist, but after speaking to a ton of investors, it seems that there are many people out there who don't have a set idea of exactly what they want. Then they get upset when the Craigslist contractor doesn't have the same vision that they do. Do not be that person. Here's an example. I needed tile to be installed, so I went on Craigslist and found a tile pro who charged by the square foot. And when we agreed on a price and date, I made sure to have the place cleared out and had all of the materials waiting for him. It really is that simple. And if you own your property and you are working on it yourself, you are essentially the general contractor and it is your responsibility to hire competent subcontractors to get the job done while providing them the vision that you want. Hey, real quick, thanks so much for watching up to this point in the video. I appreciate you all and I wanted to encourage you to subscribe to this channel if this is the type of content that you are interested in. Don't forget to head over to my channel after this video ends and check out my latest monthly net worth update. Also, please like this video, share this video, and comment to get this video in favor of the YouTube algorithm. So how did this all save me $100,000 on renovations, and how much did it cost me? Obviously, even if you did all of the work yourself, 
you're still going to need to shell out money for materials. With that being said, my total investment in labor, materials, and equipment rental to renovate three units was $60,000. When you take that away from even my cheapest original quote, that means I saved at least $100,000 on these renovations. As a bonus, after my wife and I got married, we lived in one of the units for a year, which saved us a ton of money as we were living for free and making a profit on the remaining three units. Let's do a quick recap of the different ways that I was able to save money on these renovations. The first thing I did was commit to doing as much work as possible myself. This included the demolition, which I rented a dumpster for. The second thing that I did was hire friends and family to help with general labor. This might seem counterintuitive, but think of it as a way to spend time with friends and family while also providing monetary value to them. The third thing I did to save money was keeping my job and only working mornings, nights, and weekends on the quadplex. I realize this is obvious, but if I didn't have that job, I would never have been able to afford those renovations. Lastly, I only hired contractors when necessary and for specific jobs. My tip for you is to make sure you know exactly what needs to be done and provide everything that the contractor needs to get the job done efficiently. As you can see, I did end up spending a lot of my free time working on this quadplex for many months. And from a monetary perspective, it was completely worth it. But the experience that I gained from working on that property was invaluable. I learned about how to manage contractors, the cost of labor and materials, the time certain projects take, and much more. I can now use these skills in future projects. So if you are a beginner real estate investor and you are on the fence about what your level of involvement should be, I highly recommend to go all in on the first project. This will help you solidify your knowledge base which will smooth out any headaches in the future. That's it for now. Until next time, keep at it.